Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Thanks for stopping by to see another one of my computer tech videos. If you're interested in syncing folders or files between computers or drives, or just between two different folders, you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you a free Microsoft software called Sync Toy, and it is a great tool, it's free to use to do those very tasks, syncing between different computers on a network, syncing a particular folder from your uh, hard drive to an external drive for backup purposes, anything like that can be done, and I'm going to show you how to run it automatically from the task scheduler, which is really, really useful. And uh, if you need to look back at this, you can obviously rerun the video, but SyncToy shows you how to do all this in their help folders in the program. So how do we get to the program? I first want to show you the logo, because there's not a lot of pictures of this logo out there. Um, when you download the program, you don't necessarily get a shortcut on your desktop for SyncToy. And uh, this is what the logo looks like when the program opens, so make sure this is what you've got. Uh, and it looks like this. Now, SyncToy version 2.1 has been the version since Windows 7 came out, so it is compatible with 7, 8, and 10. I've used it personally on Windows 7 first, when I first discovered it, and Windows 10, and it works flawlessly in both. And um, I've heard it works on all three, Windows 7, 8, and 10. So, it's free. Go ahead and grab it. It works wonderful. It's really easy to use. How do you know you have the right place? Well, you can type in SyncToy download, uh, SyncToy 2.1 Microsoft download, and it will take you to uh, https uh, colon slash slash www.microsoft.com. Make sure that's in the URL. I'll put the link in the description below so that you can be sure you're at the right place. It should look something like this if you find this video recently after I posted it. Uh, it might have a different ad, but this button is where you want to click to download SyncToy 2.1. You'll download the executable file. Um, you'll make sure that I believe it selects the correct version if you're 64-bit architecture or 32-bit architecture. It'll just decide which one by analyzing your computer for you. Uh, but you'll get the right one. And um, I have 64-bit, so I want to make sure mine says X64 in the program name. And so you'll download it, and then you'll open the executable file, and you'll install SyncToy. Um, so this is what the program looks like. It's very simple. Here's the logo. You'll see some Windows 7 icons there. This is... Uh, hasn't really been updated since Windows 7, and it doesn't need to be. It works fine. Um, so you won't have any folder pairs, and I'll explain what that means in a second. You won't have any folder pairs set up because you haven't set up anything to sync between one folder and another. So this program works by syncing one folder or copying or echoing, and I'll explain what all those mean in a second, from one folder to another. Okay, And so you have to set up these, what are called folder pairs, yourself. Now, you can easily do that. You can create a new folder pair. The way I've set up SyncToy, personally, is to back up all of my documents, my Dropbox files, my Google Drive files, my pictures, and my videos from one location on my hard drive, my C drive, to a location on an external drive. But I've, in the past, set it up to synchronize my documents and these types of files between two different computers. And so uh, it has lots of different variations in its usage. So I'm going to show you, since you won't see any folder pairs, how to create a new folder pair. Click this little button down here, and you'll see left folder, right folder. Left folder is where the things begin, okay? And um, you're going to have your files here for sure, the files that you want to save or copy or sync. So you can either type the long address for your files, or you can browse a folder. So I have a particular folder selected, so I'm going to go to my user, so I can see everything that's mine. And I'm going to go to my documents. This is Windows 10, by the way, as you can see. And I'm going to go to Compositions. I'm going to go to Solo Piano. Now, when you select a folder, it does not have to be the uh, base folder. It can be a folder with other folders inside of it. It will copy or synchronize or echo anything inside any particular location you pick. So I'm going to pick this one. And the address is shown up here. You can see my username, my documents, composition, solo piano, it stops there. You could keep going if you wanted to go to a root folder. Then you'll select another folder somewhere else that you want to interact with your left folder. So you'll browse for that. Now I'm going to go to a different location on my external drive that I'm using to back up things. I'm calling it local disk D. You might have a different name for it. So I have solo piano on this side. Now it highlights you don't need to double click, you just press OK. Your folders do not have to have the same name. 
Obviously, your destinations are not the same for the left and right. So it's not looking for identical naming. So your other folder on the right side could be named something completely different at the end. It doesn't have to be the same name. But for what I'm doing, I'm trying to copy. So now I need to get into the three options you have. Click Next. Here are the three options you have, and they explain it pretty thoroughly. So Synchronize, if you click Synchronize, that means any updates you do to either the left or right folder location will be copied to the other folder. So let's say you change something on the left side on your hard drive, you add a folder to you add a file to solo piano. Uh, it will when it runs, it will add that file to the right folder. If you decide to delete it later from the right folder, it will then delete it from the left folder the next time sync toy runs. So new updates and files are copied both ways. That's what we say. Renames and deletes. So if you rename a file, it will show up on the right folder. If you rename something in the right folder later, it will show up in the left folder. So what this does is it removes any hierarchy the left folder has over the right. They both do the same thing. That's what Synchronize is used for. Most people, if they're using networked computers between two different places and they like using maybe one computer at some points and one computer at other times and they want the same, they want them to look identical, they would choose Synchronize. Echo is one that people would choose if they want to maybe back up their files, maybe create a copy of the files they use on in a particular folder on their computer. What this does is it only updates files left to right. So the left folder is where the changes are initially made, and in the right folder they are then copied over there, all the changes. Okay. So this is overriding what's in the right folder, but not going back and changing what's in the left folder. Renames and deletes on the left are repeated on the right when sync toy runs. So this is what I'm using currently with all my folders. Contribute is slightly different and maybe those who are concerned with maybe saving older versions of files might do it this way. So new and updated files are copied left to right like the echo but um, renames are also copied from left to right but no deletions. So if you delete a folder on the left it will not be deleted on the right when it comes to contribute. So you'll save all your older versions of your files. No deletions will occur. So that's something that someone might do. I'm going to choose Echo, and I'm going to click, click excuse me, click Next, and then it's going to ask me to name my folder pair. So my folder pair, I could name it anything I want. So I'm going to name it Solo Piano sync just to show you how it shows up and you click finish then that folder pair after a second will show up in your set of all folder pairs it just takes a second and there it is now it's showing you everything that you have done now you are limited in what you can edit in this folder pair okay you can change two different types of things you can change the action you can say okay I didn't want to echo I want to synchronize or I want to contribute that's fine or you can change uh, the types of files to include or exclude. Now, for those who are copying or those who are syncing, you would just leave this alone. But if you've got some types of files you don't want uh, copied over, for example, you could exclude system files or you could exclude hidden files, which are sometimes synonymous with system files in Windows. Activate for run all means you can, that down here there's an option to run all after I get out of this window. This one will run when you press that. Save overwritten files in the recycle bin. You can That's what it automatically does with SyncToy. All the files that are overwritten, the older version is thrown in the recycle bin. It's not deleted. And if you click this off, it won't put them in the recycle bin. It'll delete them. So that's uh, up to your preference. Those are the only two things you can change. You cannot change the destination. So if you screw up on the destination, you have to delete the folder pair. And you can do that right here and it'll allow you to delete it. Before I delete, I just want to show you, you can rename the folder pair. Solo Piano Sync, let's say two, and then that name change will reflect. So I'm going to delete this folder pair because I'm not going to use it, and so it just disappears, and you have to start over if you didn't mean to do that. So just be aware that it's free and to do a little bit of work. You can't change the destinations, but you don't have to pay for it, and it works really well. Now, when you run this program, you will click run down here, but if you've selected a particular sync to do, it will only run one at a time.
But if you click all folder pairs, it'll show you what it showed me when I uh, put this window up in the first place. It'll show you all the folder pairs and you can just run all. And here's what it looks like when you run a certain set of folders. It goes through and looks between the left and right for uh, changes, differences, and stuff. And it looks at dates and everything. And it's going to give you a rundown of operations. Now, uh, failed operations will show up in red uh, numbered, and uh, blue operations will show up as successful operations. I'm not going to have any operations to do because I've already done them this morning when I logged on. But I just want to show you what this looks like. You can see the exact folder it's looking in. You can see the actions it's doing. And if you've got changes to be made, it's going to make those changes. And it's uh, really nice. So this is uh, something you don't have to click on here and then make happen. Uh, you got to remember to do it and all this. You can make this happen automatically. And you can stop it. If you don't want to do it, oh, look, right here. You're seeing um, successes, some failures, things like that. It'll tell you the type of operation. It'll tell you the number of successes, fails, and totals. So I'm having some failed files because uh, I've got some Google Drive documents that uh, some other people shared with me, and their names are too long. So when the names are extremely long, uh, SyncToy has a problem reading them. But I'm talking like extremely super, super duper long with lots of address changes and lots of slashes and things like that. Most people don't have to deal with this, okay? And so it's copying a video. It's copying the video I just made uh, just a second ago. And so that takes a while. Videos will take a while. But it's going to show you your failed operations. And uh, when you have a failed operation, all these numbers show up in red. So I have three successful overwrites. One successful new, one success, one failed new, and 11 failed create folders because these folders are really long and they're not folders that I've ever had. You won't usually have this issue. Okay, so I'm going to stop this, and you can stop right in the middle of an action, and that's fine. It'll just it won't erase anything you just did. It just won't continue. But you can't look. You can't go back and resume. So once you stop, you're done. And so. That's SyncToy run manually. Now, what if you want to run it automatically, like I do? Well, you can do that. On Windows uh, 10, you go down to this little Cortana search bubble and type the word task. When you type the word task, you can see the task scheduler, which is an app that comes as a system app with Windows automatically. Just double click that. And what you'll see is a set of all the tasks that you've set up on your computer. Uh, and uh, you can look at those by looking at the task scheduler library. Now these show you the tasks that uh, are either running right now or running on your logon. I have created one called sync task to run sync toy and do all the folder pair operations when I log on my computer. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to show you where to go. What we're going to do is create a task, a formal task. Okay, and this is what the window looks like. And so you're going to go here and you're going to name it whatever you want. I chose sync task for mine. And uh, it's going to, you don't need to describe anything. You don't need to set a location. You do want to run only when user is logged on if you want this to automatically happen when you log on. You can set it to do other things like run whether the user is logged on or not, but if you only have one logon on a computer because it's your personal computer, that would be unnecessary because if you're not logged on, nobody else is. So you just need to decide for your particular situation what's best. Now, you go to triggers. Now, you can add a trigger, okay, you by clicking new. And uh, what you want to do is you want to set it up to run uh, every time the computer logs on. So... Uh, I will show you what that looks like on my particular thing, but uh, right now I'll just show you, you just look at, at logon, okay, or at startup, depending on what you want to do, and you would click that, and you won't need to set up any of this other stuff. But you can, as you can see, it's very, very versatile. You could set up when this task runs, how often it runs, what time it runs. It's really nice. Okay, so that's triggers. Actions. Now, what is it going to do? Your tasks need to tell the task what to do. You haven't told it what to do yet. So what I would do is I'd click my particular program script, which is the uh, the executable application file for SyncToy. 
command file. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here, and we need to add an argument. The particular argument we're going to add is dash r. What dash r tells task uh, scheduler to do is to run all the folder pairs. That's the code. And so I'm going to go to my particular thing. You don't set, you don't need to set up any conditions or settings. You don't need to change any of that. So I'm going to open my particular sync task, which allows you to edit your task. And it's going to show me the same window. See, I've got my name for my task. I'm running when the user's logged on. My trigger is at logon. Now I can edit that, and you can see all the options I showed you earlier, but I just want it to be at logon. Here's the action to start a program. Now I'm going to open this so you can see. I looked up this particular program, and you'll see I've made the name nice and big for you below. This is where the file is, and this is what it is, syncToyCommand.exe. And um, you could search for that in your programs, or you could just copy this name down and use it. But that's how it installs on your computer. That's where it is, and that's its name. Then you add the argument slash dash r. Don't add anything in start in. Just leave it like this, and then it will run after you log on. All the folder pairs that you've set up. Okay? I haven't really changed any of this other stuff, just like you saw before. And history is disabled. So I'm not keeping a history of these logs, so I don't need to. Okay. So when I log on to my computer, SyncToy runs. I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and log on to my computer now. I restarted it. And there you see this window open. Okay, this is the command prompt. And this is running my task that I started. Now, I'm sure I could figure out a way to get it to not show that window, but I just wanted to show you exactly what uh, all my programs are starting, so you can see this is a log up. This is what the program looks like. Now I need to give my computer a second before I start to get it to move around, but um, this is what it looks like. And after a while, it's going to start populating the tasks that it's doing on here, so you can see what's happening. Now, of course, if you don't want to see this, and you uh, aren't willing to go through look task scheduler to figure out how to s turn it off, you just minimize it and then it's not there. But as you can see down here, it's got the SyncToy logo. So when SyncToy runs, it doesn't have its own special uh, window it sets up. It's a really basic program. And um, as it runs, you're gonna see some things occur. So I'm gonna uh, fast forward to that point. And then it closes just like that when it's all finished if you didn't already minimize it. So that's it, people. That's SyncToy version 2.1 for Microsoft free software um, set up with a task scheduler to run automatically. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching this Tutor Terrific video. This is Falconator signing out.